Hello, welcome to Eclipse in Java using the debugger. This tutorial is going to be fun. We're going to learn how to use the Eclipse Java debugger to look inside a running Java program. This is going to help us fix programming mistakes and also learn more about the inner workings of Java. Now this tutorial assumes either that you have completed the Eclipse in Java for Total Beginners tutorial or have some familiarity with Eclipse in Java. No prior knowledge of the Eclipse debugger is needed. The lessons are designed so that you can work side by side as we go along, pausing and rewinding as needed. As with the other tutorials, we will use test-driven development. Now before we get started, please check that you have Eclipse 3.3 or later installed and that you've downloaded the file called debuggertutorialproject.zip and the tutorial companion PDF document from the website. The zip file contains an export of the project that will serve as our starting point for this tutorial. Now in the first part of the tutorial, we're going to learn the basics of using the Eclipse Java Debugger. After that, we'll look at some more advanced features. Now what is a debugger? A debugger is a set of tools that allows us to pause a running program and look at the contents of variables inside the program. Now why would we use a debugger? Well, the first reason is pretty obvious, to debug our code. As we'll see, the debugger allows us to quickly find exactly where and why our program didn't work as we expected. Now you can also use a debugger to examine and learn about a new program by stepping through the code and seeing which methods are called and what the methods do. Finally, by allowing us to see inside the Java Virtual Machine as a program executes, the debugger can help us develop a better understanding of basic Java and object-oriented programming concepts. Now when you first look at the Eclipse debugger, it can seem pretty complicated. There are a lot of options and a lot of commands that you can learn. However, there are really only two tasks to focus on initially. How to step through a program, pausing where desired, and how to examine the contents of the program's variables while the program is paused or suspended. Once you have a good understanding of these two tasks, those poor bugs won't stand a chance. Now, let's get started. Here we have Eclipse running. First, we'll import the project we're going to use for the tutorial. We go File, Import, General, Existing Projects into Workspace, press Next. We're going to say Select Archive File, Browse. This is the directory where I downloaded the zip file. Select the zip file, Open, press Finish, and now we've got our debugger tutorial project. Now if you completed the Total Beginners or Persistence tutorials, you should be familiar with the My Library project. We've got these four classes and we've got some test classes. If not, take a moment to read the project summary in the tutorial companion document, or if you prefer, look at the code for the four classes, Book, My Library, My Utilities, and Person. Before we start debugging, we're going to tell Eclipse to display line numbers in the Java source editor. We'll go Window, Preferences, oops, shrink this down a little, General, Editors, Text Editors, and we'll check this box that says Show Line Numbers, and press OK. Since the debug view refers to line numbers, it's convenient to be able to see the line numbers in the Java Editor view. Now we're ready to start debugging. To start the debugger, we need to do two things. First, we need to tell the debugger where we want the program to pause, and secondly, we need to run the program in debug mode. Let's open the My Library class for editing, and go to the main method, and we're going to click over here on the left to the main method. We're going to double click, and we see that little blue decoration there. That indicates that we've put a breakpoint, if 
we hover, we see method breakpoint, my library entry. A breakpoint tells the debugger to pause or break at this point in the code. Now breakpoints don't have any effect when we run a program using run as, but when we run a program using the debug as, the breakpoint takes effect and the debugger will run the program to this first breakpoint and then suspend or pause the program just before this line is executed. Now we can set a breakpoint on any line of code and we can toggle it on and off by double clicking. Now starting a debug session is just like running a Java program except we use debug as instead of run as. So we can go run debug as Java application and when we click this we get confirm perspective switch and we want it to automatically switch to the debug perspective and we'll see that in a moment. So we're going to check remember my decision, this way we won't get this question every time. Select yes and now Eclipse has switched to the debug perspective. Now as you may remember we can switch perspectives either by using these buttons here, I can go Java or debug or by going window open perspective and I could go Java and then back to debug. There's nothing magic about perspectives but it's very handy to have Eclipse automatically open the debug perspective when we open a new debug session. So at this point we're running the main method of the My Library class in debug mode. Now let's look at the debug perspective. In the upper left here we have the debug view. This shows the class being run, org debugger tutorial my library. Then it shows the thread. Now simple programs like this just have one thread. If you have a more complicated program, maybe with a graphical user interface, you might have more than one thread. But here we just have one. Then underneath thread, this line is called a stack frame and it's got this little pause symbol and we'll, we'll learn more about stack frames as we go along but this basically just shows exactly where we are on the program and we're at the main method which is line 160. Below the debug view we have our Java editor and here we can see our breakpoint now this breakpoint was set at a method so we stopped just before the first executable line inside that method. So even though we set the breakpoint at 158, we're actually stopping here just before line 160 because that's the first executable line inside the main method. Now notice that the editor view highlights the current line of code that we're about to execute, which is in the main method. Now, over here we have the outline, which has the main method highlighted, again because we're inside the main method. And then up here we have the variables view and the breakpoints view, and we'll talk about those more as we go along. Now, the first thing we need to do is to learn how to step through our program. So we're going to focus on these buttons right here. Now first of all this button is the resume button and we'll talk about that more later. This basically would continue the execution of the program until either the program is done or we hit another breakpoint. Now this red button is a terminate and this just basically stops the debug session right where we're stopped in the program. So this just terminates the session and lets us start over again. Now the three buttons we really want to focus on right now are step into, step over, and step return. These are the main commands we use to control how we navigate through the program. Now we're going to start with the second button, step over because that's 
the easiest one to understand. This button just executes the current line of code and stops at the next line. So now we're going to press it and we can see that now the stack frame says we're now at line 161 and now line 161 is highlighted down here and of course here we're still in the main method and there were some changes up in the variables and we'll talk about those later. So the step over just executes the current line and stops at the next line. Let's press it again and now we're down to line 162. Now we're going to try the step into button. If the current line like this one contains a call to a method or a constructor, in this case it says set author, the set author method, when we press the step into button it's going to take us to the method being called. Now we can see that several things have changed. In the debug view we've now got two stack frames. Basically this set author stack frame was pushed down on top of our original stack frame. In the edit view we opened up the book class and went to the line in the book class that's about to be executed. The line inside the set author method of the book class. And again in the outline view we went and opened the book class and are down at the set author method inside the book class. And again our variables changed and we'll talk about those. The third navigation button is the step return. If we think of the step into method as dropping down one level in the program, we can think of the step return as going back up to the previous level. Let's press step return now. The stack frame for the set author method is gone and we are now at the next line of code back in the main method. And over here we're in the main method again. Now let's try these three buttons one more time. Pressing step over will take us to the next line 164. Pressing step into opens up the set author the book dot set author method and then pressing step return takes us back to the next line which in this case is 166 in our main method. At this point we're off to a great start learning the debugger. We've learned how to start a debug session and have been introduced to the step over, step into, and step return commands. We're going to end lesson one by pressing the terminate button to terminate this debug session. In the next lesson, we'll continue working with the step commands and then learn how to examine the program's variables. This is the end of lesson one. I'm Mark Dexter saying so long for now.